Good evening. Today we have a special guest from Poland, Mr. Janusz Silicki, son of uh, Mr. Czesław Silicki, founder of modern Polish falconry. Many Polish falconers are obliged to him for his efforts on restoration of falconry in this country. And we would like to ask you to tell very briefly about your father, about his way, how to become falconer, and everything what can be interesting for people around. So please tell us what you should say about your dad. Mm -hmm. uh, my father, Czesław Szylicki, was born in 1933, it's before the war, in the eastern part of Poland. After the war they came back, managed to come back to Poland and settled in Wrocław, where he, then he studied uh, forestry at the forestry school in Poznań. His master diploma was on falconry and uh, this is how he uh, started interest in this uh, sport. The problem in Poland was that falconry was lost over the time. Uh, it was very popular in medieval ages, but in the 18th, 19th century it was lost. Before the war there were a few, a few people tried to start it, but it never really worked. So, he learned it, uh, then he started to work for the forestry schools as a teacher and the director of forestry school in Tuchola. Uh, then he created a small group of uh, students uh, who created, formed a first club at the forestry school. The, one of the members of this small group was my uh, older brother, Piotr Szewicki, uh, and the whole group was about six, uh, seven people. They went all together with my father by invitation to the Germany, to former East Germany, for the two-week falconry course and also the hunting horns course. Uh, this is how the, it started the way of transmitting information from one generation, from, one, from older falconers to younger. Uh, since that, until today, we keep this tradition of, of falconry um, teaching that every falconer should have should practice with some older one and we organize as a club every year a falconry course. My father was also very interested in all kind of the hunting tradition uh, so he also started the hunting horns in Poland after a long break of many many years. Uh, he started also many other traditions like the um, showing respect to the animal skill during the hunting and so on. He was also one of the um, Chairman was the chairman of the Hunting Dogs Association of the Polish Falcon Polish Hunting Association, and with the people who were his friends, he officially started the Polish Falcon Club. It was legalized in 1972. Uh, it was necessary to have few well-known hunters who became founders of the club. So he was one, and the second was Professor Zygmunt Pielowski, two falconers, and three. Uh, people interested in dogs. Since that, the club exists until now. Uh, we just had this year 45th anniversary meeting of the club. Uh, at that time, we didn't have any falcons in Poland. They were they disappeared in 1960s due to DDT. So all the beginning of Polish falconry is with goshawk. Goshawk was our first and only birds for many many years. Uh, we at that time they were not protected, so it was possible to catch them in the wild and to, to, to train them. As my father said, his first when he catched his first falcon, as he catched the first uh, kill with his first goshawk, uh, then he decided that now he is ready to teach others. And that's how the beginning of, the, of this uh, falcon league club at Tucholas Forestry School started. Then he was always uh, surrounded by many young people teaching, studying falconry. Uh, he was very passionate about hunting and falconry and also about conservation. In the same 1970s he started a project on breeding of the black grouse. He created a very large aviary in natural conditions of some 12 hectares of the ground uh, where they put about 20 black grouse taken from nature and they started to breed them. It was one of the first known to me uh, successful black grouse breeding projects in the world. 
so once the falconry was legalized, we of course the number of falconers was starting was getting higher and higher. Uh, in 1980s, it started to be possible to get falcons from our friends abroad. And in the late 80s, my father started a breeding project of the peregrines. First, we learned how to breed um, falcons uh, using other species like the lanners or lugers. And then in 19, late 1980s, we've got our first pure peregrines and started to breed them. In 1990, there was a first reintroduction that by the, from the breeding by Professor Pielowski in Champion. Uh, we had in Wozławek the first success in 1992, and since that my father was conducting both releasing project and the breeding. Uh, the breeding was of course not very successful because breeding takes a lot of time, uh, so a few years later we started to organize a little bit different. Uh, we started to use birds from other breeders, other falconers, and this is what we do since now. Um, the project the Peregrine project is now run by younger brother Sławek Sielicki and me, I'm Janusz Sielicki, so we are the three falconers in family. Uh, my oldest sister and youngest brother were not so interested, but at least half of us is. So, this is the short story. Okay, do you know uh, how your dad was old when he got his first bird and what was the bird, what is the species? Yeah, when he, he had his first bird in about 1966-67, uh, he was at the time about 30-35 years. It was a goshawk, of course, the goshawk, uh, it's like his, with his, one of his goshawks here. Uh, at that time we used it to keep goshawks for many years, for instance, one of the oldest birds we had was, she was 18 years. Uh, still hunting. The same year, in 1972, he wrote the first, uh, for many many years, a manual how to how to use how to make falconry. Uh, it was Okwadani uh, Ptakov Povchik. It means that um, how to managing the birds of prey, and it was published in Tuchola, where he was at the forestry school in 1972. Uh, I have forgotten to show. This is another his favorite bird, as I said. The black graphs. This is one like, taken in nature, then transferred to the to the breeding aviary. Later on, in the 80s, he started to fly uh, some peregrines. Um, he is here in the picture with one of the peregrines we had. That was taken in Germany, but uh, we of course hunted with them also in Poland. Did your father tell you uh, which features should have a good falconer, which features of character and which skills does she need to have? Uh, my father was a teacher all his life, so I think this is what he always uh, was, what was most important for him, that the falconers should uh, trust each other, help each other, and hunting is not the most important thing. The important thing is being together, spending time with animals, with our birds. Hunting is just a way of spending time together in nature with birds and with friends. Did he keep any international contacts uh, with the falconers abroad from surrounding countries? Well, that was a hard time. It is, you know, 1980s, 1990s, uh, 1980s, 1970s. It was a time of the former Soviet bloc. Uh, so we had we kept contacts with the former German Democratic Republic, where, as I said before, uh, they went for the first course to study falconry, and we had quite good contacts with our friends from Czech Republic and Slovakia. So at our meetings since the beginning, we always invited colleagues from these three countries, sometimes from Hungary. Uh, so, as I remember, always the Hungarian, Czech, Slovak and German presidents of the clubs were coming for our meetings. But that's it, because the, the Iron Border uh, was too strong at that time. It was not possible to come with birds from West countries. Uh, so we started our international contacts wider only after 1992, when we had many friends from Germany and other countries. And then I became in AIF, what of course helped us to have much more contacts than before. Could he speak uh, some foreign languages? Uh, he spoke Russian and Polish, uh, because during the war he was in ex-Soviet Union. 
for many years. He's, when he came back to Poland, he couldn't even write in Polish, so he had to learn it from the beginning. Uh, but he didn't speak English or German. Fortunately, at that time, uh, Russian was lingua franca for that region. Later on, we had many friends who spoke Polish or somebody who can translate. Did he use any hunting dogs uh, during his hunting? Yes. As I said, he was a kinologist. He was the chairman of the Polish uh, kinological uh, section of the Polish Hunting Association. Uh, so he used many, many dogs. Uh, for, for falconry, uh, we used the um, German Trachtschar, as I don't know exactly the English name. Uh, so the German pointers, more or less. And uh, we had always at home two, three pet dogs, not only birds. Have he, uh, have, uh, he been recognized during his life or the late years of his life by Polish falconry community? Uh, he was one of the founders, everybody know it. In fact, there were only three of the founders, my father, Professor Pilowski and Wacław Leszyński, were active for a longer time. Because, as I said, all other theoretical founders were just friends of my father and they helped us to establish the Falk Company. Uh, the hunting, the Fond Colony Association, but they were never more, never more involved. Uh, so until his death, he was always coming to the meetings. Uh, he was always well known to all the young generation, and I hope he, until now he is remembered. Okay, thank you very much. It's uh, very interesting, and uh, we are happy to say that son of Czesław Silicki Janusz already many years serves uh, as a member of advisory committee for International Association for Falconry and Conservation of Birds of Prey. So we are more than sure that uh, father can be proud of his son, one of his sons. So thank you for your um, interesting uh, talk. Thank you. Yeah.